Hello and welcome to my subclass tier list for Chivalry 2. Most of you have asked themselves at some point, which subclass is the best for the team objective mode. In this video I will rank the subclasses from best to worst regarding the amount of score points and kills you can get and also by the value that a certain subclass brings to the team. Alright, let us start with the best subclass for the team objective mode. The Raider. There are multiple aspects that make the Raider so good in team objective. The most important thing is the Warhorn. It is the best special ability in the game regarding the amount of score points you can get from it and also concerning the value it brings to your team. In theory you can heal your whole team to full HP with the Warhorn and you can also pick up every knockdown ally nearby. If you time your Warhorn right you can easily get over 600 score points with a single use which is really a lot. Another aspect which makes the Raider so good is the weapons he can use. The Dane Axe for example is extremely good in 1v1 but also in 1vx situations. But it gets even better. The Raider can use two main weapons so you can have the Dane Axe but also the two-handed hammer equipped for example. This makes the Raider really versatile. You can just switch your weapon depending on the situation. And you also have a backup weapon in case you lose one or decide to throw one at your enemies. So overall the Raider is the best class for team objective in this game and even as a beginner you can already be at the top half of the scoreboard when you time your Warhorn correctly. Alright now let's get to the second best class for the team objective mode, the Officer. Just like the Raider the Officer also has the Warhorn a special ability which makes it really easy to rack up a lot of score points. On top of that, this subclass has amazing primary weapons like the Greatsword for example and also really good secondary weapons and even throwing knives. The Officer is definitely a top tier class for a team objective mode, but in my opinion the Raider is just a tiny bit better because of the two main weapons he can use and the extra amount of stamina which makes fighting 1vx a little bit easier. And although the Knight class in general has more HP than the Vanguard class, you won't notice your extra amount of HP really often, because blunt and chop weapons deal bonus damage against Knights. But overall the Officer and the Raider subclasses are almost equal when it comes to racking up a lot of score points. Now let's get to the last top tier subclass in this game, the Poleman. The Poleman has the Bandage Kit as a special ability, which is definitely not as good as the Warhorn, but you can also get quite a few score points using it and also help your team a lot. For example when you throw a Bandage Kit on a knockdown ally you will revive him and almost always get 100 score points. Also the Bandage Kit is available way faster than the Warhorn and it is a way more reliable way of getting score points, because if you use your Warhorn right after an ally used his nearby then you end up not getting a single score point and you won't heal or revive anybody. But the bandage kit is not what makes a poleman a top tier class, it's mainly his weapons, the spear and the halberd. The spear is the most dominant weapon in the team objective mode and it's also extremely good against experienced players in group fights, which can really turn the tide of a battle. And if you're interested in playing the spear and dominating the team objective mode then make sure to watch my spear guide. And as I already mentioned the Halberd is also incredibly good if it's in the right hands. The Halberd sprint attack causes insane amounts of damage and the Halberd is overall much more versatile than the spear and also allows for good 1vx fights. Now let's get to the A tier subclasses. And the best A tier subclass is the Devastator. Unlike the other subclasses that I've shown, the Devastator does not have a special ability that supports your teammates since he uses the oil pot. This makes it way harder to rack up score points. Most of the time the amount of score points you'll get from the oil pot will not even be close to the other special abilities like the Warhorn, Bandage Kit or Banner. And oftentimes you will even get negative points because teammates just love running into fire and low HP for some reason. But overall the Devastator still belongs into this tier because of his weapons and the absurd amounts of kills you can get when using the Highland Sword or the Great Sword. The Highland Sword for example just hits like a truck and is insane in 1vx fights because of the damage and the range. You can just wildly swing your weapon in group fights after repose or counter attack and almost certainly get multiple kills or at least takedowns. Alright now let's get to the second but also to the last subclass in the A tier, the Guardian. Since the Guardian uses one handed weapons his ability to fight groups alone is not as good as the Devastators, but the weapons of the Guardian are still extremely good. 
He can use the Warhammer or the One-Handed Spear for example, which can both be really dominant in Team Objective mode. And another really good aspect of the Guardian and one of the reasons he is an A tier is his special ability, the Banner. If placed before a choke point or close to a big group fight for a certain area, it can give you even more score points than the Warhorn. But overall it's a little bit less reliable than the Warhorn, because the banner can just be destroyed and if the group fight moves to another place then your banner becomes pretty useless. Alright that's it for the A tier subclasses, now let's jump over to the B tier. And the best subclass in this tier is the Crusader. The Crusader is pretty similar to the Devastator, in the sense that both subclasses use the oil pot as special ability and have pretty good two-handed weapons. But the main difference is that the Devastator has the better weapons. Although the Executioner's Axe or the two-handed hammer, which the Crusader can use, are really good in group fights, the Highland Sword, which the Devastator has in his arsenal, is simply better. And since both subclasses rely on getting kills for their score points, because they don't have the Warhorn, Banner or Bandage Kits as special ability, and most kills can be made in group fights, the Devastator is A tier and the Crusader B tier. And now let's get to the second class of the B tier, the Man at Arms. The Man at Arms uses only one handed weapons, so his kill potential in group fights is not as good as the Crusaders, but the Man at Arms can really shine in 1v1s and smaller fights, and his shield gives him extra survivability against archers. Overall his weapons, for example the sword or one handed spear, are really good and depending on the weapons you choose, the Man at Arms can be a really versatile subclass. You can pick a sword as primary weapon for instance and a mace which is blunt and does a lot of extra damage against knights and footmen as secondary weapon and then switch weapons depending on the situation on the battlefield. And although the potential for kills is overall smaller than the crusaders, the man at arms is still situated in B tier, because his bandage kits can contribute a lot to the team and give him a lot of score points, unlike the oil pot in most cases. And if you combine your bandage kits and your versatile one-handed weapons, then the man at arms comes really close to the crusader. Alright, now let's look at the C tier. And the best subclass in the C tier is the longbowman. Since the nerf to the crossbow and also the introduction to the warbow, the longbowman is definitely the best archer subclass. The warbow can one hit other archers with body shots and if you see an enemy covered in blood and hit him, you get a guaranteed kill in most cases, since the warbow does so much damage. Just one hitting other archers alone can give you an absurd amount of kills and an insane KD ratio, especially when targeting crossbowmen who have to stand still when reloading. And it also helps your team a lot, because you get rid of the other annoying archers. But if you also focus on low HP enemies and utilize your brazier or other archer's braziers to light your arrows and spam your enemies with arrows, then you can even top score as a longbowman. The second best subclass in the C tier is the crossbowman. And although it is harder to get kills as a crossbowman than as a longbowman, especially because of the crossbow nerf, the crossbowman is still in the same tier because of his special ability, the banner. It can contribute a lot to the team and give you a ton of score points. If you combine well placed banners with good aim you can even outperform the longbowman in some cases. Also keep in mind that you can light your bolts at other archers braziers for some sweet extra fire damage. Now let's get to the last subclass of the C tier and also one of my favorite classes, the ambusher. The Ambusher has pretty much the worst weapons in game and his special ability is the Quiver, which replenishes his ammunition for his throwing knives. So it's already obvious that it's hard to top score as an Ambusher and to contribute a lot to your team. But what makes it a little bit easier is the fact that you deal bonus damage from behind and cause extra damage when hitting your enemies heads with throwing knives. So if you know exactly what you're doing you can still perform really well, but it definitely is difficult. If you're interested in playing the Ambusher or you're struggling with the subclass, make sure to watch my Ambusher guide. And now let's jump to the D tier. The first subclass of the D tier is unfortunately still the Field Engineer. All those structures have been buffed with the recent update, the Field Engineer is still an underperforming subclass, especially regarding the score points you can get. Using the bandage kits you can support your team pretty well, but they won't make up for the bad weapons that you have. 
As a field engineer you can use the sledgehammer, the shovel and the pickaxe. They are all below average for primary weapons and what makes things even worse is that you don't have a secondary weapon. Not even a dagger or something. So if you lose your primary weapon because of bad stamina management then you're pretty much dead since you can't defend yourself anymore. In my opinion the developers should definitely change this and give the field engineer at least a bad secondary weapon. Another thing that should be changed has to do with the structures you can place. At the moment you don't get any score points for your structures. You should be at least rewarded when an enemy hits or destroys them, because that indicates that you placed them well or in a way that made the advance of your enemies harder, so they had to get rid of them. So regarding score points, the field engineer is a really bad subclass to play, although you can sometimes contribute a lot to your team by placing your structures. But I have to say that a single engineer can rarely make a difference. Field engineers shine most when working together. So overall the field engineer in its current state is really unrewarding to play and it's hard to perform well. Alright, now let's get to the last and worst subclass in this game, the skirmisher. Other than the other archer subclasses, the skirmisher relies on throwing weapons and not shooting projectiles. What makes it extremely hard to perform well as skirmisher is the limited number of throwing weapons that you have. When choosing the javelins for instance you only have 5 of them and although you can pick them back up after throwing and you have the quiver a special ability which lets you replenish them it is still difficult to rack up a lot of score points if your aim is not completely on point and you fight in close range every now and then. Alright guys that's it for my subclass tier list. I will put the full tier list at the end of the video so whenever you want to have a look at it you can just go to my video and skip to the end so you can see it again. I hope that you enjoyed the video, if yes then please like, subscribe and see you on the battlefield.